Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave, and this tutorial is part of a Node.js for Beginners tutorial series. I'll give a link to the full playlist in the description below. Today, we'll be learning about the Events Common Core module in Node.js, and more specifically, how to both emit custom events and how to respond to those events when they are emitted. Right now, we're picking up where we left off in the last tutorial about NPM modules. And if you didn't see that tutorial, you can just catch up by installing the dependencies you see right here. So for production dependencies, we have the date FNS module and the UUID module. You could also refer to those as packages. Also as a dev dependency, we have nodemon installed. And then in the scripts, of course, the start script is node index, but what we would use in development is the dev script and that is nodemon index. So if we type npm run dev, it will launch nodemon and nodemon will listen for the changes in our files and restart the server without us constantly having to type that. So again, if you didn't see the previous tutorial, just update your package JSON and uh, npm installs to this. And if you don't know how to do that, please do watch the previous tutorial. Okay, let's move over to the index.js. And you can see we're already importing format from the date FNS module. And then we're also importing UUID and it's actually v4. There's different versions in the UUID. So we're importing v4 as, this is an alias, as UUID. So we can call that right here. And you can test these out with these console log statements that we had from the previous tutorial. But what I want to do right now is rename this index file. So I'm going to right click and choose rename. And I'm going to name this log events in camel case js so this is a complete different file and i'm going to make this into a module that we import into an index js that we haven't created yet so we need both of these imports but we're going to make a logging function of course logging events is something that's very useful on a server let's go ahead and also import the fs module so we'll require fs and then we're going to want to use promises. So let's say fs promises, set this equal to require fs and then dot promises. And we also need the path module. So here's require path. And now that we have all of the imports we need, and notice these are the only two that we really needed to use npm for, because these are all common core modules here that we imported. Now that we have that, I'll get a couple of extra lines. Let's go ahead and define our log events function that we can export. And it's going to be an async function, and it will receive a message parameter. Now inside the function, we need to define, we'll call it date time, and let's set this equal to, and let's just grab this format that we have right here and copy this, because that's what we essentially need. I'll use a template literal, and inside here I'm going to paste the format, the new date, it's got the tab, and then it will just end the template literal and leave it at that. And then we're going to take another definition here and call it log item. And we'll really use the date time. So I'll put another template literal. And we could have done this all in one line, but this gets kind of long if we do that. So I wanted to break it up. And so we've got the date time. Then I'm going to put another tab. And remember, there's a tab in here too. So what we're doing is creating a tab delimited log file. And now I'm going to use UUID and call that to get a unique ID for each log event. And then one more tab, and we'll just put in the message. There we go. And now that we have our log item, let's go ahead and log that to the console so we can see it while we're in development mode here as well. And now we need a try catch block. Let's get to the async await portion of this function. And we'll catch an error if an error happens. And let's just log the error to the console. If we have an error writing to the log, we won't be able to write the error to the log. So this is the best thing we could probably do right there. But in the try block, we can await fs 
promises. And then let's go ahead and append file. If you remember from our tutorial on working with files, append file will also create a file if it doesn't exist. And now we need to use path and we'll use path join and two underscores, and then we'll use the directory name value. And then let's put it in a logs folder. And after that, let's call this event log dot text. And then we still need to pass in the content that we're going to put in the log. Right after that parentheses, we need the comma. And that would be our log item that we defined. Okay, now we can save this much. Now, I am thinking of something that could cause an error in the future, and we'll get rid of these console log statements down here, but I wanna leave it like this for now so we can actually test out getting the error as well or catching the error. So let's do module.exports and set this equal to log events. Now we're exporting our log events function and we'll be able to use it in the index that we're going to create. So over in the file tree, we'll create a new file called index.js. From here, let's go ahead and define log events and set it equal to require and now dot slash because this is once again a custom module, not a common core module or an NPM module. And so dot slash log events. And now we're ready to work with the events common core module. And what we want to do is define an event emitter. And let's set this equal to events, the common core module events. After that, we need to define a class. So class my emitter, and it's standard to capitalize instead of use lowercase on the first my there for a class. And then we wanna say extends event emitter. And then we can just have the empty curly braces right here. This is, I know it looks strange, but it's directly from the docs as well. From here, we can initialize the object that we're going to create. So we want to create my emitter, but now, whoops, this needs to be a lowercase m to start out. So don't let it change on you or, or select the option that would select the previous my emitter. And now that we've got my emitter defined, let's set it equal to a new object that is my emitter right here. So we've initialized the object. Now I know that's a little confusing, but that's what it looks like in the docs, so I just stuck with that. And then we've got add a listener for the log event. So then we can say my emitter dot on, and that is how we listen for an event. And I'm just going to call this a log event. We could be listening for any event we want to. This is the first parameter of listening for an event. So we just say which event we're listening for. And then we can call this anonymous function to pass in the parameter message. And now inside this anonymous function, we'll call log events. And once again, send that message that was passed in. So now that we are listening for the log event, we need to go ahead and emit the event to test this out. Now I wanna set a timeout, which will hopefully let us understand how everything is processed a little bit better, but we're just going to emit the event. You don't have to have a timeout to do this, I just wanted to put a little delay in there. So once again, we use my emitter dot emit now, not on, on is listening, so emit is emitting the event. Now we'll emit the log event, and then let's go ahead and send our message. And I'll just say log, event emitted. That looks good. Now let's put a delay in here with the timeout and I'll put two seconds. That may be too long. It may not be long enough to see the difference. It just depends how long it takes NodeMon to restart the server. So now that we've got that saved and this is our index, let's go ahead and open a terminal. You can do that from the terminal menu or I do control back tick. I'm in Windows. And now I'm going to type npm run dev to launch nodemon and our index.js. And we get an error. So let's see what we got. I did expect to get one. Notice we did log to the console. So here's what we would have written to a log file. 
We've got the date, we've got the time, we've got the unique ID, and we've got our message, log event admitted. So that all worked out as expected, but we have an error, and let's see what it says here. Console error is not a function. Well, I should have typed console log here. Let me go back and fix that. We definitely have another error that I was expecting to see, so let's drop this back down. And of course, NodeMon should restart after I change this. So instead of console error, let's put console log. We might have to restart NodeMon, let's see. Yep, now it restarted, and we can see the message that I was expecting to get. So here, once again, we got the log file, and then we got no such file or directory. And that is because a pinned file will create the file if it doesn't exist, but it won't create the directory. And we didn't have a logs directory yet. So we need to modify our function because if you think about this, when you install some software, it, there may not be all of the directories created that you need. So let's modify this try block to account for not having that logs directory to begin with. If you notice, we haven't used the FS module yet. We had used FS promises. So in the try block, let's say if, and then we'll say not, if it not exists is what we're going for here. So FS dot exists sync, and then we want path dot join, two underscores and directory name, and then we're just looking for the directory. So if this does not exist, essentially is what we're saying, then as you might guess, we want to create that. So we'll say await and now use FS promises. Oh, and then we need dot MKDIR, which is make directory. And we can say path dot join, once again, two underscores in the directory name and create the logs directory, please. So now if the logs directory does not exist, it will create the directory and then it will either create or append to the event log file. So let's make this change. And now if we look back, we can see we got no error on this latest execution. Once again, everything wrote to the console. And now I'll bring this down. And if we look over here, we have a logs folder and we have an event log and there it is. We wrote to the event log. Now let's go ahead and run the program again. We'll need to make a change of some sort to do that. And then we can check the event log. So let's just make a quick change here by putting in a console.log or no, you know what? We don't need to do anything like that. We could even just put in a comment, say testing, save. And we should be able to see some changes once again. If we go back to the event log, oh, we've got another problem. After our message, we didn't put a line break. And so then it just wrote the next log on the same line. So we need to put in a line break after that as well. So let's go to our log events. And where we define our log item, at the end of message then, let's put a line break with a slash in and now this should make a difference. Let's check the event log again. And maybe it made a difference. I'll tell you what, let's try this. I'll just delete this altogether. Now the file doesn't exist. I'll get rid of the testing. Save. Write the file. Let's look at the file. There it is. Now, Back here, once again, I will undo, put the testing back and save. And let's look at the event log. There it is. We've got another log event emitted on a new line and everything is lining up as we expect. Delete testing again and save. And there it wrote a third line to the log. So this is working as expected. So here is a abstracted log events function that you could use. You could accept more than one uh, parameter as well. And if there was a second parameter here, when we would be in the index.js, when we emit this, we would just need to put the next parameter right here. So there can be more than one parameter as well. And this is how 
you set up an emitter to not only listen for, but to emit events. Now there might be all sorts of actions that you want to emit events for. When we create a web server, we're wanting to emit events to show what requests came in and log all of those so we have some detail of the activity for our web server. And that's what we'll be building next, a web server with Node.js. Hey, thank you so much for giving this video a like if it helped you get started with Node.js. Also, thank you for watching and subscribing because you're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.